know what I think. Mm -hmm. Felix, we've argued about this all through I filming. know, I know, and I still don't like it. It's those noises. Yeah, well, what's the matter with the noises? Well, you know what I mean. They're rude. <laughs> you know, one of those things make noises like that. <laughs> that wasn't me, it was the chair. Sure, sure. No, honest, look. <laughs> look, nothing, see? Look, may I suggest that we cut the feelings? <laughs> it wasn't me, it was the chair. Sure. sure Truly it was. Listen, look. <laughs> Just got it. Catch it on the right spot, that's all. Quiet, quiet. It worked before when I did. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, it's all right. We were just, I mean, we were... We were, we were just we... doing some exercises for busy executives. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, it's called uh, uh, chair aerobics. <laughs> <laughs> latest thing in carpet boardroom. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, I thought you'd probably want to have a look at this. Ah, yes. Uh, Elliot, you remember Horace Dunn from Little Dunn Productions, don't you? Mm. Yes, of course. I, uh, I saw him when he was making that documentary about us when we were Ray filming. Mm. Hello again. Oh, hello. <laughs> Listen, I've, I've seen some of your other documentaries. Is it true that your last subject really killed himself after his wife saw it? No, that was just a rumour. <laughs> probably started by his widow. <laughs> Can we talk about your film? If there's anything in it we don't like, I mean, can we cut it before it goes out? No time. Why? When's it going out? Tonight. What? Tonight? Oh, well, that's marvellous, isn't it? Eh? That's absolutely bloody marvellous. I mean... First of all, like idiots, we let them film us on location when everyone's away from home and letting their hair down. And now we've got no control over what they're going to use. It'll be a great piece of television. Everybody will be talking about it. Yeah. Especially the solicitors representing our wives. <laughs> I think what we've got is a very honest documentary about the making of your show. And filming you at work on location provided us with the best microcosmic view of the whole. It gave us an opportunity to observe you at work and at play. We start in the nerve center for the whole operation, the bar. This is the place where the cast and the crew met for the first time. But certainly not for the last. Then he insisted on wearing this enormous taffeta monstrosity. It was ghastly. He looked like an overweight drag queen on a very bad night. Oh, <laughs> oh darling. Oh, Calvin. Oh, you're looking gorgeous as ever, darling. You know, now I know you're here. I'm going to enjoy this. All right, let's... Yes, hello. play a big bit of it. Watch him. Anything in a skirt. Anything. Thanks for the warning, love. If he met a pig wearing a skirt, he'd try to pull it. Wouldn't we all, love? Wouldn't we all? Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna make an early night. Alone? Yeah. Look, I never mess with the women I work with. Gay? Oh. Oh, somebody else. Look, I promise if I ever change your first. Right? <laughs> Remember that line? Oh, oh, hey, what time we start tomorrow? Um, 8.30. We'll start with the dog under the table sequence, okay? Oh, okay. In anticipation of the first day's filming, most of the unit turned in early, hoping for a great night's sleep. Except the unit Casanova, he was just hoping for a great night. Darling, I've got the latest Sony Walkman with separate speakers and everything. And I know how you feel about good sound. Calvin, I've got a very early call. Oh, come on in, it'll only take a minute. <laughs> That's what I've heard. Good <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go, everybody. The weather forecast is perfect. Felix, what's the weather forecast? Ten hours of glorious sunshine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't stop, don't stop. What do you think? Well, it's well, look at the time. too bad, yeah. It's set for the day, isn't it? OK. Everybody in, folks. Rain uh, stop play. Really? And that's when we came to realise that nothing can wreck a filming schedule faster than the British weather. Valuable time was wasted looking for a break in the weather that people finally realised wasn't going to come. And then, having moved the whole shooting match inside... Felix, it stopped raining. <laughs> what? It right. Everybody outside. OK, everybody outside. 
website, please. It's stopped raining. You're joking. I just brought my cousin. Which would have been the right decision had Mother Nature not made a different decision. <laughs> decisions. That's what film is all about. Spot decisions, instant decisions, decisions worked out over days, decisions dictated by circumstances. Decisions that change other decisions. Decisions leading to indecisions. But the decision that most surprised and pleased us was that the cast and crew decided to allow our cameras to follow them 24 hours a day. <laughs> well, look, why don't we spend the rest of the day filming inside? Then we don't have to worry about the rain. Yeah, that sounds sensible. <laughs> Living with the Kelly Monteith film unit as we did, we very quickly learned all sorts of things about them. For instance, there were two phrases that were guaranteed to galvanize them into action. The bar's open and... Okay, everybody, this is yeah. the last shot of the day. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I've got some great equipment upstairs and some terrific tapes and the stereo as well. Calvin. Yeah? Why don't you take your tapes and your great equipment and stop it? <laughs> but even relaxing in the bar, work is never very far away. Have we found our skinny Indian yet? Uh, hey, mm -hmm. how about this one? Well, no, not skinny enough. How skinny does he have to be, Kelly? Very skinny. Skinny, skinny, in fact. I mean, the skinnier the Indian, the funnier the joke. Right. Hello, darling. Who are you, then? Aquarius. Oh, well, this is your age, then, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius myself. Easily aroused, pretentious, quick to anger. Oh, yeah. And with a great little stereo upstairs just waiting to make music with you, darling. Aquarius. You mean that's your name, Aquarius, and your sign? Well, actually, I'm a Leo. But in my body and in my soul, I know I'm Aquarius. <laughs> well, besides the name Leo, wouldn't really fit you, would it? <laughs> if anything, you're more of a, a Virgo. Um, look. I've got some tapes in my room that explains everything you need to know about astronomy. Now, why don't you come upstairs and have a little listen? While Calvin continued his relentless pursuit, Kelly was getting some hints on being an actor. My boy, I hope you won't think it presumptuous of me, but are you familiar with the cardinal rule of our profession? You mean the one that says, it's not enough to have a success, but a friend should also have a little failure. <laughs> no, no. I was talking about age. You have to remember that to the punters, you and I are not human. We are actors. Actors never age. People don't like it. It only reminds them of their own mortality. So, if anybody, and particularly a newspaper reporter, mm -hmm. asks you your age, lie. I can't. I can't. I lied about my age once. Then I had to remember what age I said I was when I lied. <laughs> <laughs> 
Then I had to lie again to add on the appropriate amount of time to make it appear as if I was aging logically to the age at which I lied about. Precisely. What? You mean you understood that? Yes, yes, of course. Calculating the age of an actor is very like calculating the age of a dog. For every ten years we live, we only add a year. So if an actor tells you that he's 50, he could actually be 322. <laughs> That's not too personal. Um, how old are you? 478. <laughs> Next birthday. Oh. Happy birthday. A couple of days after this conversation, Mr. Monteith tried to heed this advice. You're looking great. How old are you now? 78. How old are you? Uh, 38. 38. Yeah. You're full of shit. Meanwhile, at the end of a trying day, one man was still trying. I'd like to show you all about my um, rising sign. my room and I'll give you that new scene. Okay, yeah, okay. fine, I will. You know what you should do with that rising sign? What? Stick it in a bucket of cold water. <laughs> okay, here you go, man. Okay. All right. Thanks. See you tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Good night. Good night. The second day's filming was much more successful. And during the break, we talked with Kelly about the origin of one particular scene. Mm. Well, the idea for the pipe sequence came about at dinner one night when I lit up the cigar. Well, I never heard the end of it. Elliot thought I looked like a jerk, right? Felix thought it was bad for my image. Anyway, that got us to talking about smoking in general, see? And we realized that all of us at one time, like most men, had tried a pipe. And the reason we didn't smoke a pipe was because of all the hassles involved. First, you gotta take it apart. Then you gotta clean it. Then you gotta clean yourself. <laughs> then you gotta ream it. <sighs> then you gotta ream yourself. <laughs> then you have to put it back together. Then you have to fill it. Then you have to light it. And light it. <laughs> and light it. And finally, after only an hour of preparation, you can settle back and enjoy the smoke. <laughs> the smoke that comes from your shirt, trousers, and the carpet you just set on fire. Then if you're not dressed suitably, there's the problem of where to put it. Basically, I think a, a cigar is not as dangerous as, as a pipe. Or as, as destructive, for that matter. Well. 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 Well, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Makes me look a right Burke. <laughs> when you're in front of the camera, you gotta learn to take the good with the bad. You gotta be objective about yourself. Ready for the second half, gentlemen? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you look really silly, smoking a cigar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tea. Yeah. This from the man who trusts the British weather. <laughs> we pick it up with the musketeer dueling scene. Got your hat. This guy's looking to put a sword through my throat, and she wants me to wear a hat. Monsieur, soon you will taste the end of my blade. 
Not if you taste mine first. <laughs> So they embarked upon a duel that was a fight to the finish. Except in this fight, there is no finish. What about the skinny Indian? Did we get him in? No. Here he is. What do you think of this? Who? Oh. oh, yeah. Now, that guy is really skinny. Let mm -hmm. me see. Whoa, at last! We finally found a skinny Indian. Oh, let me see. Yeah. <coughs> What's he done? Apart from famine posters. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been in any restaurants, I tell you that. <laughs> so, while a skinny Indian gets his chance, a barmaid called Wendy is about to get hers. They're my favourite group. I love them. Oh, darling, you don't know how lucky you are because I just happen to have a pirate tape in my room. Oh. Why don't you come up and have a listen? Oh, I'd love to. Can we do it when I get off? Oh, sure, we can do it all right. Fantastic. Um, by the way, what time are you off? 2.30. Well, fine, it's a date then. See you later. 2.30? I must be crazy. <laughs> oh, desperate. <laughs> Meanwhile, in another part of the forest. Is this your room here? Is it? Do you know your room is not that far from mine? Yeah, in this hotel, no room's far from yours. Mind if I uh, have a look? Why? It's identical to yours. Well, I just want to check it out, just to make sure. Mm. Okay. Mm. Just for a minute. Jackie okay. wakes up between these two stuntmen. Ch Jackie? From makeup? I've heard of people pulling stunts, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway. Those two stuntmen will never be the same again, especially the big one. Ooh, he's ridden his last bike, I can tell you. <laughs> Honest, my room is completely different than yours. You gotta come look at it. You would be amazed. No? No, I'm really tired. Yeah. I've got to get back to London tomorrow. All right, well, I'll try you next time. I mean, I'll see you. <laughs> Good night. At last, everybody's bedded down for the night. Well, almost everybody. Yeah? It's me. Oh, hello, darling. What's up? I've got to listen to the tape. What? The tape. I thought you wanted to show me your equipment. Oh, yeah. Sure, I'm not going to come in. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> first. We'll knock it off in next to no time. <laughs> Mr. 
first scene was to dog the crew, if you'll pardon the pun, for the rest of the shoot. Finally, five days later, the day dawned crystal clear, and with measured calm, the producer gave his instructions. Now listen, for God's sake, let's film this damn dog sequence once and for all before I go stark, staring, screaming mad. Where's the dog? Isn't he here? I haven't seen him. Oh. Has anybody seen the dog? Oh, that's wonderful. The rain finally stops, the sun condescends to shine, and we'll lose the bloody dog. <coughs> Where's Ronnie? Ronnie went to the station to pick up the skinny Indian. Stop the skinny Indian, I want the dog! <laughs> Where's Ronnie now? That other guy is. That's the skinny Indian. That's the skinny <laughs> Indian! I know, I know. He used to be skinny, but he couldn't get any work, so he became a compulsive eater. Now he works as a fat Indian. Can he play a dog? <laughs> So that was goodbye to the skinny Indian sketch. But life went on, and we rejoined them on the last day's filming when I spoke to Kelly as he was being made up. Now, this may look like I'm being pampered over, but in reality, what they're trying to do is they're trying to kill me. Now, when Jackie finishes stuffing my pores with his makeup book, my skin's gonna suffocate and die. And Teddy here is busy tightening my trousers to cut off circulation to my lip. Hold still. My head. Cassie looks good, don't you think? Mmm. Isn't it tough working with so many lovely actresses? Well, somebody's got to do it. But really, I have one ironclad rule, that no matter how pretty they are, I never fool around with the women I work with. <laughs> mm, the Lord of mercy in your soul. <laughs> OK, pay attention, everybody. This is it. One more scene to do, then we're finished. And tomorrow night, we'll all be sleeping in our own beds. Oh, that'll be a novelty. <laughs> <laughs> worry about that later. Let's get this gangster scene done first. Moustache looks good. OK, Ronnie, what are these vehicles doing here? Get them out of the way, will you? Come on, let's move it. Dave, Terry, can we have these cars moved, please? Uh, right, stand by, everybody. Turn over. Speed. Running. 180. Take six. Action! For Al? Nobody makes a fool out of Al Cajones. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah? It's Al Cajones and his boys. Hey, wise guy. And Dame. Who? Al Cajones! Who sent you? With filming at an end, the crew let their hair down in the way they do best. In a raucous, drunken orgy, the precise details of which are best left to the imagination. But on the morning after, our camera was there to record everybody's return to sanity, to reality, and to their own rooms. Yes, uh, I'm just off the laundrette. <laughs> and the cobblers.
An hour later, the last car pulls out of the hotel car park. Filming for the Kelly Monteith show is over for another year. <laughs> can't show this. Why not? Well, it makes us look like dummies and, and sex maniacs. We just filmed what happened. Look, my wife's not going to believe this. I mean, I just took Aquarius back to my room to show her a video of a show we've been working on together. I mean, I, I passed out on the bed and she fell asleep on the floor. I mean, who's going to believe that? <laughs> not me. <laughs> it's true. Huh? Well, it's all right for you. You're the only one with nothing to worry about. You haven't got a wife waiting for you. Oh, yes, I do. And if her husband finds out about it, he's going to kill me. <laughs> and if Alexandra sees this, she's going to kill me. And this from the saint who never fooled around with women while he was working with them. When we fooled around, we weren't working. <laughs> and this is definitely going out tonight, hmm? Definitely. Eight o'clock. Bye. Thanks. Right, thanks. Mm, thanks. We're dead. We're all dead. Mm. How are you going to explain that dash to the laundrette and accomplice to your wife, anyway? I'm hmm? not. She's never going to see it. Hmm? It's going out tonight at 8 o'clock. That's right. And at 8 o'clock tonight, my wife and I will be on our way to Paris for the biggest surprise trip of her life. <laughs> Hello, British Airways. Yeah. Can I have two tickets on your 8 o'clock flight to Paris, please? Make that four. Four. <laughs>